Whenever I need to take myself back to the place of my birth in eastern Siberia, I listen to this song. It's the story of a Buryat woman who is separated from her husband by war and boundary lines, and it speaks of love, loss, and longing. And whenever I need to remind myself why I became an anthropologist, I look at some of these pictures I've taken of elderly people during my field work. Here are two men deep in conversation. The one on the left wears old Buryat ethnic dress and his friend wears present-day Mongolian dress. Behind them there is a small settlement with a white yurt and around them the, the white rolling pastures that are so important to the Buryat Mongols as a semi-nomadic people. Here on these maps you can see that Buryat homelands lie on both sides of the border that separates Russia, China and Mongolia. This map shows how the Buryat diaspora is distributed today. From the 1920s right up to the 1980s, borders between China and the Soviet Union were closed and Buryat people were not permitted to visit their relatives and their birthplaces on the other side of the border. But they found ways to cross separating lines, traveling at night, and sometimes disguising their tracks by fixing animal feet to their shoes. This next picture of my own grandmother, Daritsirin. She was born in the 1920s and passed away in 2010. A historian once said, when an old man dies, a library burns. Buryat people, now in their 80s and 90s, and approaching the end of their lives, hold stories that tell of human tragedies, and sometimes the stories have been repressed for decades, existing only inside the people who experienced them. These elderly people and their families suffered decades of political persecution during the Stalinist regime in Russia, Mongolia and Maoist China. They were caught up by political upheavals during the Second World War when Russia and Japan were on the brink of a full-scale war in North China and Mongolia. And many people disappeared, either executed by secret service or sent to gulags. Women waited for decades for their husbands and sons to return home from exile. And when the political regime eased in the East, these countries in the 1990s, families began to ask the Ministry of Justice and Domestic Affairs for permission to look at archives to find out what happened to their relatives and to find their graves. But many people have been unable to find each other. This handsome young man, wearing a nice silk outfit for the photographer, was one of them. He was born and educated in Russia and worked in Mongolia. Ever since he was arrested by the Soviets in the 1930s, his family has been trying to trace his life and they're still making painful visits to archives to search for any record of him. When people are displaced, they rely on letters and photos to keep in touch. Sometimes this had to be smuggled across the border. These black and white photos were sent secretly from China to Russia in the late 1950s. On the reverse side of the image you can see that the sender has noted the names of children who have never been seen by their relatives across the border. In interviews with me, elderly people have told their stories for the first time and have broken down in tears as they have described the pain of losing their homes and seeing people being killed and being separated from siblings and parents. These sisters had been tragically separated for almost 60 years. This picture shows their first reunion when the older one came from China to visit her sister in their homeland in Russia at the end of 80. Some of the happiest family occasions are when people come together. This snapshot is taken at a meal celebrating a family reunion. Buryat people travel many thousands of miles to meet each other and visit their holy places. So here is my mother on the left with her cousin and her cousin's husband. My mother lives in Russia, her cousin lives in Mongolia, but the cousin's in-laws live in China. The Buryat people have a strong sense of belonging, not just to each other, but also to the land of their birth, or Nyutuk. 
Nyutak is linked with spirituality, essentially Buddhism and shamanism, where spirits are worshipped at a local place, such as the place of their birth and where the umbilical cord was buried to link you physically with that place. Returning to the place where you were born is symbolic of accomplishing your life cycle, and to die in a foreign land is felt as a kind of a karmic punishment. When families are able to worship at their ancestors' homeland Nyutak, they experience moments of catharsis. Grown men and women are able to cry. They roll on the grass and embrace the earth to absorb its energy so that they can continue their lives. The Buryats sometimes describe themselves as a hard-boned people. They are proud of their ability to survive and to cope with trauma without feeling a need for revenge. This stems from their Buddhist beliefs. Here is an image of Stalin envisaged as the Lord of Hell, Erlich Khan. He has been reimagined in this terrible role to express an idea of the karmic punishment which people have to undergo. Finally, here's a picture of me, aged five. I hadn't yet started school and was living with my grandparents in the countryside in Agastep while my parents were away studying in Moscow. Today I am working in Cambridge on an ambitious project that seeks to understand what happens at that point where two great powers, Russia and China, meet. The story of the Buryat people and of many other frontier peoples is part of that much bigger narrative.